Good morning, guys. So yesterday I got a big response from the testimony that I shared about casting your fears and your worries and your anxieties on God and letting tomorrow worry about itself. And that comes from the book of Matthew. I'm not sure which scripture it comes from, but um, it does come from the book of Matthew. But one thing that I want to talk about today is that when I was teaching Vacation Bible School a couple weeks ago, I taught about how God will surprise you. And that is coming from um, the story about Joseph. So Joseph was a highly favored, spoiled baby boy um, of like 10 to 11 brothers, I think it was. But um, his father favored him. He could decipher dreams. And he was just the baby. And his brothers were so jealous of him. And they were really jealous of the gift that God gave him. And one thing... It, one thing that really made the brothers furious was that Joseph had a dream one time where he was standing in the middle of a field and there were these stacks or these bundles of hay all around him and there was 10, 10 around him. And he told his brothers that that signified that one day, oh, and the stalks or the whatever they were, they bowed down to him or bowed down to Joseph in the middle. And he told his brothers that that meant that one day they are, they were going to bow down to him. And as you can imagine, that made his brothers furious because his brothers are older than him. So, I mean, why wouldn't it? So, they came up with a plan one day um, to kill Joseph. And so, um, by God's divine intervention, they decided... Sorry, it's so loud as hell. I'm outside. Anyways, they decided that they were going to just sell him into slavery. Semis are loud. Um, and so they took Joseph's coat of many colors and they um, they cut it up. They put blood all over it and they took it back to their father and they said he was killed. And so the father was deeply depressed over this. So Joseph was sold from um, into slavery by his brothers from the land of Canaan, and he traveled to Egypt where he was a slave. And so he was, he became a highly favored slave, and he actually got to move into Potiphar's house. And Potiphar is like a step below. So here's Pharaoh, here's Potiphar. All right, so he got to go to Potiphar's house. Well, Potiphar's wife really, really liked Joseph. And she lusted after him. She really wanted him. And he would not, he would not entertain it. And so she tried and she tried and he kept saying no. Well, that made her furious. And she accused Joseph of attacking her, raping her, and told her husband. And that made her husband furious, of course. And he threw him back in jail. Well, while he was in jail... He, um, I'm sorry, I'm like so ADHD. Anyways, but while he was in jail, um, he met two men. He met, uh, the chief baker and he met, um, the cup pourer, I guess you would say. And they had two dreams, and, or they each had a dream, and Joseph deciphered their dream. One was to die, and one was supposed to, um, live in Pharaoh's house again. He was going to get out of jail and he was going to live in his house. And Joseph said, please remember me whenever you go into the house of Pharaoh and remember that I, you know, I can do this. I have this gift from God. Well, Pharaoh starts having these dreams, these horrible dreams, and he doesn't know what they mean. So the, um, the man from jail remembered Joseph and he said, I know somebody that can help. Let me call Joseph or let's get Joseph in here. So Joseph told the um, Pharaoh that his dream means that for seven years, they are going to have an abundance of crops, abundance of livestock. Um, they were just going to be in this great place. But he said, after those seven years were up, seven more years were going to occur. And it was going to be seven years of famine. That means crops were going to dry up. There were not going to be anything to eat. Livestock would be diseased. They would die. There would be nothing. So God told Joseph or told Pharaoh in his dream and then Joseph told the Pharaoh that in those seven years of um, abundance that they would need to um, save. They would need to take what they need to eat what they can get, you know, eat what they need, get what they need 
but save the rest and to, you know, have for this famine. Well, so seven, 14 years pass, and Joseph is this very highly favored person in Pharaoh's house now, like super high up. And he's sitting there, and this famine is across the land. So it's not only just in Egypt, it's in Canaan too. So his brothers travel from Canaan to Egypt to try to get food, and they didn't even recognize Joseph. And so Joseph was mad. You know, he's like, you sold me into slavery. What makes you think I want to give you any food? And he said, how many brothers do you? He said, where's your youngest brother at? Which, you know, that was him. And he said, oh, he's at home with our father. And Joseph said, you're a liar. And they're like, no, we have another brother. His name is Benjamin. And he said, he's at home with our father because our father was scared something would happen to him. So Joseph said, go get your brother. Leave one brother behind. Go get your younger brother, bring him back, and prove to me that you're correct or you're right. So they did that. And when they come back, Joseph was just overcome with emotions, you know, that there was about Benjamin and his brothers being there. And he decided that he was going to trick his brothers or trick Benjamin. He hid, a, he gave them food. He gave them all the food they needed. But he hid a gold cup in one of the bags of grain. And then accused Benjamin of stealing it. So then the brother, and so he said, I'm going to throw him in jail because he stole from me. Well, the brothers became so worried, so overcome with emotions that they're like, we cannot do this to our father again. We cannot break his heart. Take one of us. Take one of us. Replace us so he doesn't get put in jail. And in that moment, Joseph was overcome with emotions too because he felt like his brothers had finally realized what they had done or what they had did. And the what the moral of the story that I'm trying to get at is that you God has a plan. God has a purpose for everything. It may take this took twenty years for God to have a purpose for Joseph. And he started him as this like shepherd boy in Canaan, in the land of Canaan, and now he's in Pharaoh's house telling dreams and helping people so don't give up you're going to go through trials i've gone through I'm trying not to cry i've gone through a lot of trials but god has a plan god has a purpose it might be 20 years from now but don't give up don't give up on God.